let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. The secret of giving and sharing everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of truth, leader Olumba, Olumba Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, St. Matthew chapter 6, verses 3 to 4. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine arms may be in secret, and thy father, which sit in secret, himself shall reward you openly. Second lesson, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 to 21. For what glory is it, if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God, for even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Golden text, Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 24 to 25. And the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Quote, Beloved, I have told you that my big bag is not yet opened. The contents of the bag are marvelous. You can have a lot of money and yet the money is not and yet if the money is not prudently invested because of the spirit operating in you and leading you in the same vein you may be beautiful but your beauty is not useful to you. Again, this is caused by the spirit in you. You may equally have a lot of food, but if the spirit leading you is evil, then no person will accept to eat your food and you will not derive any blessings from your food. The spirit in you should teach you everything there is a proper method of every, for doing everything. If you were to learn it, you would do the right thing always. To be generous is easy, but the question is, how do you go about it properly? Generosity should not be a public declaration, but a cheerful, joyous, quiet action. Do you have to stand in the village square and make presentation of gifts to your community? There is a rational way of giving things to people. Everything has its proper approach. That is the perfect wisdom which I have brought for all who care to listen to me. If you do not follow this perfect method, you will gain nothing. Do not show your benevolence grudgingly or boastfully. Neither should you command someone to accept your gift. You may hear a person say, Madam, come and take the money so that I will rest. If you disgrace someone because you have to give them something, it means you are disgracing God and you will suffer rather than get blessing. It is not correct 
to divorce to your wife or your husband? What kindness you want to show to another person? Similarly, you may not tell anyone about any act of generosity you have performed. Do everything in secret. Do not let anyone know when you give a gift to the poor. Do not require him to explain all his problems before you offer him assistance. When you want to help the poor, do not even let him know or feel he is a poor person. Do it from your heart and with all humility and reverence to God. Let him thank God the Father whom he believes knows his needs. By so doing, we shall behold love wisdom and power of God for the process by which God promotes and provides for you is not known to man. You do not tell God your needs yet. He knows and supplies them. God himself does not announce to people his kindness to you. So you are not to tell people when you help others. It must be a secret between you, the beneficiary, and God alone. If you commit sin and suffer for it, do not complain to anyone because you are suffering for your sin. When you committed the sin, you did not tell people. So if you suffer for being a rogue or a wife or husband snatcher, a liar or a troublemaker, what is the glory in it? If you suffer for any sinful act of yours, do not console yourself that you are suffering for or as Christ because it is not true. You are merely reaping the reward of your sinful acts. If you suffer for your sins, then it is not on behalf of our Lord Jesus Christ. But when you suffer in the course of doing good to humanity and truth, then it is for Christ. For instance, if you suffer to provide for the poor and the needy secretly and humbly, not allowing your beneficiary to know and expect something or making him to feel inferior or poor, then you have suffered for Christ's sake. Remember that you should not let him or any member of his family know that you have done anything. You may simply address the thing to him as an anonymous letter and send it to his residence. Do everything to tolerate him and accommodate him, no matter how provoking or abusive or irritating he may be. Overlook his weak points and continue to help him with all humility and love. Do not help anyone so that you can lord anything over him. Do not do anything as though you are helping a servant or a slave. You have to do it as though you are doing it to Christ. You have to do it wholeheartedly with humility, with cheerfulness, with meekness and love. You should not allow him to suffer before receiving your benevolence, and your deed should not reflect in any way of your discussions with people. Let him have the impression that it is God that has done it for him. Do not behave as if you have suffered on his or her behalf. 
for that is one of the aspects of giving which mankind does not know. Always remember that you are serving God and not the person. Let it not ever occur to you that you are helping or being generous to any person. Therefore, do all things as though you are doing it unto Christ. Do not complain that you are suffering for the church or the community. Neither should you ever let people know that you are suffering for your family or for yourself. Do, not, do you not know that God is the one doing all things? Use the utmost love, patience, tolerance, and endurance in dealing with those you are helping whatsoever he or she does. Do not tell any other person you have to apply this same method when you want to forgive the sins and offenses of others. Seeing the level of humility and other virtues of righteousness in you, the offender may repent and turn to God in spirit and in truth. Let us hear our first lesson again. First lesson, St. Matthew chapter 6, verses 3 to 4. But when thou doest alms, let not thy right hand know what thy left hand hath done, that thine arms may be in secret, and thy father which sit in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Brethren, you would now realize what is stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3. It said thus, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and have not charity, it profited, it profited me nothing. Brethren, you must hate evil, embrace love, and hold fast unto good. Material possessions are not the ultimate in the sight of God. Food and even the human self is nothing before God. God desires every person to be peaceful, to be patient, humble, tolerant, meek, lowly in mind, joyful, cheerful and obedient. Remember that whatever you do is done to God. Therefore, if you do anything with anger or with pride or boastfully or grudgingly, God will not accept it because it means you have disgraced God. In many cases, you arrogantly give something to somebody in such a way that makes him sad and so he begins to lament in his heart that if he had his own, he would not have accepted yours. Your approach in such case spoils your good intention and your gift is therefore not accepted by God. That is why many poor people will tell you that they are wealthy even though they have nothing, so that you may not disgrace them. You boast that you do not respect any person. If you do not respect or humble yourself before any person, then you cannot humble yourself before God. What you are being taught here is the correct manner of approach. Since what you are doing is for God, you have to do it with humility and sincerity. You have to apply love, righteousness, joy, peace and patience, and it is only then that God can reward you abundantly for your work. Brethren, 
that is only one step in being generous to the poor. Some people even snatch people's wives in the course of showing generosity to them. They also take their children and other things and demean them just because they are benevolent to them. They disgrace and torture their beneficiaries saying that they regret ever being born on earth. Those who do these to the poor suffer severely at the end. Therefore, do not boast or become pompous because of your benevolence to people. Do not let another person know of the help which you have given to the poor. Do not be weary of good works, for you are doing all that to God our Father. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson, 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 20 to 21. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults ye shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Do not be weary to do good. Brethren, you should know that there is no honor in evil or immoral actions. For instance, if you are caught stealing and are beaten, deformed and dispossessed of your property, you have nothing to gain and you cannot say you are suffering for God. You are reaping what you have sown. If you endure when you are being tortured for your sinful acts, then you have no honor from God. You are merely suffering for your evil practices. But if you suffer because you saw someone in trouble and helped him, then God will glorify you. If you behold a poor person, who has no food and help him only to be accused falsely, imprisoned or subjected to other forms of ill treatment, then do not worry yourself or complain to any person, but endure them patiently. Do not even become sad or weary of good works, for Christ suffered the same and that is when you can claim that you are suffering for the sake of God. If you do good to someone and he pays you back with evil, continue to do good and do not tell anyone about your good works. This is what you have been called to do when, this is what you have been called to do even as Christ did. Thus, this way you would be glorified. If you go out to help people based on your knowledge and love and power of our God and you are paid in bad coins, do not complain for you would be honored and glorified. For instance, it was announced over the radio that about 3,000 people are stranded at sea. If due to your knowledge of God, you opt to assist them, you will receive bountiful blessings from God but you must do this in the spirit of humility 
and without sounding any trumpet, go to the refugee camps and help them with food and money and clothes and accommodation in the spirit of love, in the spirit of humility and peace and secrecy. If you do this, you would be blessed and honored by God. It is better for us to suffer for doing good works, even if it means going naked. Whatever is done against you in the course of your good works should not debar you from continuing. Your effort may not be appreciated or loved or reciprocated, yet you have to continue in good works that is why God called you and equipped you for the job. Let it be known to you that you gain more spiritually for suffering because of good works done to others. Since God is happy with good works done with the spirit of joy, of humility, of love and righteousness, he would reward you. Do not seek reward from someone because you can help such a person. Do not seek gratification for past services before you can help another. Do not expect people to thank you for good works. If you do, then do not expect any blessings from God. God alone can bless and glorify you for your good works. Do not think that no one has seen your good works. Otherwise, you would be announcing and telling people what you have done. Do all good works in silence and in secrecy so that he who sees in secret would bless you. Do not go to the media houses, radio, television or newspapers to announce your good works for it for this is tantamount to unnecessary publicity do not allow people to announce you as a philanthropist but let god alone know what you are doing let us now use an earthly event to illustrate an heavenly situation many of you always think that it is foolishness to suffer for the sake of helping another person. Be it known to you that you are foolish if you refuse to help another person gratis. He that helps others and continues to do so in the face of all odds is wise. The blacksmith wife's illustration Brethren, I have told you this story before about two ladies. One was a blacksmith wife. The other met on their way to fetch water from the stream. On their way back, the other woman pleaded with the blacksmith wife to accompany her to her house to see how the husband is faring. She obliged and went with her, but on getting there, the blacksmith wife saw that the other woman's husband was so sick that he could not adjust himself from his position. The blacksmith wife went home and informed her husband. He went there with his wife and saw the man still lying down helplessly. He greeted the man but the man could not respond. At this juncture the blacksmith told the sick man's wife to follow him to his own house that there was a cure for her husband in his house. The blacksmith knew that the man was sick because of poverty. Hence, he gave her a big box filled with money. The money was the blacksmith's life savings. 
he told the sick man's wife to wait for him to write out the direction for use. The sick man's wife was convinced that it was a box of drugs for her husband. She did not know that that was given to her. She did not know that what was given to her was money. The blacksmith wrote that what was in the box was his life saving and that it should be used carefully by the sick man. That was all the direction he wrote down. So the woman went home with the money to her husband. When she got home and placed the box near her husband and opened it, her sick husband looked from the pillow and saw currency notes protruding from the box and he jumped up and his sickness vanished immediately. The blacksmith did that because he believed in God. That is exactly what Brother Ruff Cross and Star has come to do for the world. You have to be ready to suffer anything in order to save other people for that is what is pleasing unto God. He rejoices over such actions taken by his children. Do not in the course of helping others you insult, abuse or usurp their rights. If you do it correctly, then you will be blessed. Read the golden text again. Golden text, Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 24 to 25. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Brethren, we are all aware of the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ did not commit any sin. He came to suffer so that our sins will be forgiven. In this way, we would be united with the Father and be saved. He did all things to show the love of God for mankind. He did not do anything for personal gains or to be enriched. Therefore, since we are His children, we should emulate the same lifestyle. We should not seek for gratification for any work of benevolence rendered to people. We of the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star should not seek wealth or personal gains from the work of God. We are the source of help to the helpless, father to the fatherless, and mother to the motherless. We are brethren to them that have none. We are not expected to be troublemakers, to be liars, to be quarrelsome. Hence, if a man of God is offended, he should endure all in humility and love. A man of God should correct others in the spirit of meekness and truth and should not curse, neither should he fight. He does not reject any person or impute sins on others. The goal of man, the goal of a man of God is to change the evil person unto God to do good. He therefore uses love, humility, truth and good works to change the evil one. If we do not practice truth in what is another, who shall give us ours? We use good works to reveal God 
for it is the work of God to simply it is the work of God to supply the needs of others gratis. Do not work for man's reward. Brethren, do not construct a road for a community so that they may give you gifts in return. You should do such good works as a child of God to reveal his presence. You do not have to count as a debt to a community the help you render to them. There is no debt here for what you have done is the work of God. Anything you have done or do so that you know the truth, you are only showing that you know God. It is not a matter of eye for an eye. Many who call themselves children of God have not started his work yet. You are called into this kingdom to serve humanity gratis and not to blow your trumpet for doing good to others. Whatever you do must be in secret. Be practical and humble. Brethren, recall Noah and his era. He drank and was drunk with liquor. His first son saw him and laughed at him. His second son came and did not want to see his father's nakedness. He turned back, picked up a wrapper, and walking backwards towards his father, he covered his nakedness. When Noah regained his consciousness, he was told of the action of his first son, and so he cursed him, and the effect extended to his offspring, which were the twin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. You can see the humility of Noah's second son. Therefore, show good examples always. Do not be like Noah's first son. Do not laugh at people or call them evil. If you see that they lack love, then it is your work to give them love through practical examples. When you get to any community, you have to provide their needs. A man of God is not expected to utter any evil or foul word. If someone is not kind or generous or benevolent, then you have to teach him practically and humbly. If you curse, accuse, or laugh at the weakness of others, then you are not a true brotherhood. So, beloved brethren, we will not take you further. He who has ears to hear, let him hear, for a stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.